We want to do an example of a simple harmonic motion problem where uh, the model, the, the function for the motion is given to us. So in this case, we've got a mass suspended from a spring. So um, I'll erase this momentarily, but a mass is suspended from a spring like this and at its resting position, so no movement. But then the spring is compressed so that it looks something like this. It's pushed upward and released. And of course, when you do that, the spring is then going to go below its resting position, and then it's going to come back up to above its resting position, and it's going to go back down, and going to keep uh, running through that resting position going above and below. Okay? So this function right here represents the position of the mass um, and that should be in inches somehow I forgot to type that in inches t seconds after release so for example um, at its resting position the position here at rest is zero inches and then so position when it's compressed might be a because it's upward we might call that a positive position what, whatever number it is we don't know what number that is right now and of course whenever it goes below its resting position when it gravity pulls it back down below uh, this might be a negative position in inches okay so that's kind of the structure of this that we're working with. All right, so now let's get down to working with this model and understanding how to use it. So we've got our function. We know that t is measured in seconds, and we know that the position is measured in inches, which is calculated by the output of this function. In question A, we want to determine the position of the spring when it is released. Well. When it is released, we know that the time is zero. So we're going to plug zero in to the function. And it's asking us to determine the position. So in other words, it's asking us to figure out f of t. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use our model, f of t. And we're going to plug zero in for t. So we get 5 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3 times 0, which, by the way, all of this 2 pi over 3 times 0, um, or 2 pi over 3 times t, since it's multiplication. Uh, we don't have to put the parentheses here, but we're taking the cosine of all of that. Okay? So, in this case, we've got 5 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3 times 0 is 0. The cosine of 0 uh, radians is 1. So that's 5 times 1, so that's 5. So f of t equals 5. That's its position, and we have to make sure we mention that the unit, it's inches. And since it's a positive number, that means its position is 5 inches above rest. Okay? So that means when the spring was compressed, it was pushed up 5 inches from its resting position, and then it was allowed to release. Okay? Let's do another question similar to that. Determine the position of the spring after one second. Okay, so it's been compressed by five inches, allowed to to oscillate, if you will, and we want to know exactly where is the mo the not the spring. Sorry, I, both of these should probably say determine the position of the mass, right? Sorry about the typo there. There we go. So for this question, we're going to use the same model that we did before because that measures the position, but we know t is one second. So we're going to have f of t equals 5 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3 times 1 now. So we've got 5 
the cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half and 5 times negative 1 half is negative 2.5 so that means it's 2 well, let's let's say it the right way. We would never we would never say negative 2.5 inches. So, the position of the mass after one second is 2.5 inches below rest, because we've got a negative position measurement now. Okay. All right. Let's try some other things with this. Okay, so now we want to graph the function so we can visually see this motion. And let me remind you what the function is. f of t equals 5 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3 times t. And so this is a cosine function. So we know its general shape is going to start at the maximum value, come down to the minimum value, and come back up for one cycle. And in this case, because we're multiplying by 5, we know it's stretched vertically by 5. So that means it's going to have a maximum value of 5 and a minimum value of negative 5 instead of 1 and negative 1. And its average value is going to be 0. It's going to oscillate around 0. That's its position of rest. Now we just have to figure out the t values, where a cycle starts and where a cycle ends. And that's dealt with using this 2 pi over 3 times t. So we know that a cosine cycle uh, starts when the argument, or sometimes called the angle, whatever the input is to the cosine function, whenever the argument equals 0, and it ends, the cycle ends, when the argument equals 2 pi. Okay, So what we need to do now is take the 2 pi over 3 times t and plug it into both of these and solve for t. What we're trying to do is find the t values for where a cycle ends and where a cycle starts. So now that we know where the argument starts and ends, we have to solve those for t to get the t values. So for this first one, I'll divide both sides by 2 pi over 3. And we have t equals 0. So that's nice. So we know this is going to be, the cycle is going to start at time 0. And over here, if I divide by 2 pi over 3, we get t equals 3. So that means that this t value here is 3. So now if we graph this, it's going to look something like this. This is our uh, position axis, right? So this is our position in inches. And this is our time in seconds, our t axis. And this could be called our f axis or y axis. Or if you wanted to use P instead of F for position, you could. And so we know that from 0 time to 3 is one cycle. Let me move this label out of the way here. Okay. And we know that the maximum amplitude is 5, or the, the maximum value is 5, because we have an amplitude of 5. And it's a cosine function, so it's going to start up here at the maximum, right? And at the end of the cycle, it's going to be back at the maximum, right here. And then halfway between those two maximum points, it's going to be at its minimum point. So this happens at 1.5, which is down here. And then halfway between those, you're at 0. And so what we have here is one cycle of the mass. And this makes sense because the mass, remember, started 5 inches above rest. And then it's going to come back down 5 inches below and then back up to 5 inches above. Okay? And then, of course, this repeats forever with simple harmonic motion. We're assuming things like friction and 
uh, things like that won't get in the way of this motion and it will continue forever. So this is the graph of that function. Of course, you could label label more like this. This peak here happens at six seconds. This one happens at nine. This last one happens at 12, etc. Okay. But now let's see if we can answer some things since we understand the graph. So now we can do things like determine the period of this function, which is pretty simple. A period is the length of one cycle, and we can see that it took three seconds to move through a full cycle, right? It was five inches above, it goes down to five inches below, and comes back up to where it started, five inches above, and then starts repeating. So that is one cycle. And so one way we can say that the period equals three seconds per cycle, okay? Three seconds per cycle is what that means. And you'll see why I'm including this part here on the per cycle, because that's going to help us with the next question. Um, but we can see the three came from the graph. So three seconds per cycle is how we can describe the period. For part D, determine the frequency what we want there, frequency is the number of cycles per second. Okay, so um, how many cycles does it go through each second? And so what we can do is notice that three seconds per cycle, that's like saying three seconds on top per one cycle on bottom. We can simply flip this over to get the frequency. Take the reciprocal is how we can describe that. So the frequency equals one cycle every three seconds, right? And then we just need to write this appropriately so that our unit is cycles per second. Well, that's the same thing as saying one third, one third of a cycle per second. So we're just separating out the numerical value from the unit cycles per second. If it takes three seconds to go through a full cycle, then that means it goes through one third of a cycle in one second. And that's what that frequency is describing. Okay. So that's the relationship between period and frequency. Um, you, can, you can ask other things such as amplitude. I think I've already talked about the amplitude here being 5. That's pretty simple. Uh, but the, this is the basics of harmonic motion and how to use a model or a function to represent harmonic motion.